this is brothers. This video is really going to be the the hardest, but one of the most important video I will ever do on this channel. And, and I'm not even playing with you. My whole skin is hot, and I'm I, and I'm just starting this video, and, and, and I'm already burning up. And this truck is not hot, system brothers. But anyway, or maybe it's what I'm wearing. But uh, there are four kingdoms scheduled to rule this whole world before Christ returns. We've already covered from Babylon to Greece. And now we're going to cover the big bad today, the grand finale, the main villain of the story. This is world history told by the prophets, part four, Rome. We gonna start this off quick season buzz because we have a lot to cover today and we will try to keep it as simple as possible but there's a lot of stuff you're gonna have to understand and this is not my knowledge system brothers this is not my knowledge this is the word this uh, this is the knowledge of god system brothers that was passed down to me so getting that out of the way let's get into this lesson now just like with the other previous videos i always start off by showing you how the other kingdom overthrew the other kingdom same thing with this lesson now i'm gonna show you rome rising up and overtaking greece and we're gonna start from daniel chapter 7 and let's read this after this i saw in the night visions behold a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns this is the roman empire rising up system brothers and you see how it said that it's dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and diverse from all other beasts that was before it I will show you what makes Rome distinct from the other three beasts that was before just now. But before we do that, we're going to go to the history book because we're doing Bible history book, Bible history book, following, following and keeping up with the consistency. The book said the Roman Empire is going to rise up after Greece, right? Now let's go in the history book and read about it. We're going to show you Rome rising up. I picked up the wrong one. It's because it's in Roman numerals, so I kind of get mixed up a little bit. Forgive me. Here we go. Got it. Greece attained its height of prosperity and military power during the Macedonian supremacy, particularly under Alexander the Great, son of Philip of Macedon, who reigned in 336-23 BC. This great leader defeated Darius, overthrew the Persian Empire, Annex large parts of Asia and Africa and among other cities founded Alexandria. So we're talking about Alexander the Great. Remember, we showed you in the last video that he overthrew the Persian Empire, which is a part of the Medo-Persian Empire. So Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. Greece overthrew Medo-Persia and now Rome is going to overthrow Greece. But let's continue reading though. A brief reign of Alexander was followed by internal dissensions and an invasion by the Gauls in 279 BC. The nation was threatened by the states that rose in the west. Pay attention to what we're about to read here now. And all of Greece became a Roman province after the capture of Corinth in 146 BC. Under Roman rule, a period of peace and prosperity pre prevailed, but Greek political power was eclipsed. But you get the message. Sisters and brothers, all of Greece became a Roman province. That's when Rome took over, sisters and brothers. Rome took over after Greece, just like the prophets called it. Remember, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. Now, what we're going to do now, sisters and brothers, is we're going to read Daniel 7 and verse 8 now. And I'm going to show you something. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. This horn that verse 8 is talking about is talking about the religious horn. Now, let me say this. Write this down, sisters and brothers. Babylon was a political power. Medo-Persia was a political power. Greece was a political power. Rome was a political power in the beginning when it overthrew Greece. 
But then, just like the Bible said, a little horn came up. And that's the religious power. So that's what makes the Roman beast different from all the third beast that was before it. Because it not only rules you physically, like Babylon, Medo, Persia, and Greece, they rule over you physically. No, no, not only that. The Roman Empire also rules you spiritually with the false doctrine. Okay? So Rome is different from all the other beasts because it rules you not only physically but it rules you spiritually and we see a whole lot of Rome today but we're gonna get more into that later on but another thing it says it said three of the four horns were plucked up by the roots by this little horn and these three horns system brothers the name of these three horns are the Vandals the Ostrogoths and the Hurulites these are the three horns that was plucked up by this little horn, a.k.a. the Pope, because they didn't want to go along with the papacy. And we're going to read about these guys, because I could just tell you their names and move on, but I have to read it to you, sister, but I can't just tell you. So we're going to get the history book, but before we go, there's an image here. Take a, uh, take a look at this image. You see this image, right? Now, this beast has one head and it has ten horns, right? Then you see that little horn right there on the right side of your screen, right? That's the religious horns. And that's the ten horns next to it. Now, keep that image inside of your mind. You're going to be seeing a lot of that image throughout this lesson. And you also need to get familiar with this beast. As you can see, it has the head of the lion and the bear and the leopard. This whole beast together represents the Holy Roman Empire. The reason why it has all these heads and arms attached to it is because it is a mutated beast. The Holy Roman Empire is coming back in the spirit of all the beasts that was before it. So this is the Holy Roman Empire. Now let's go to the pictorial history of Italian people. And we're going to read about these three horns that was plucked up by the roots. Because you need to see this as buzz. Because seeing is believing. This is uh, the, the pictorial history of Italian people. Page 63. After 455, what central government remained in Italy was for 80 years in the hands of leaders of German mercenary troops or of Germanic tribes that settled in the country and lived exploiting the docile, servile Christian Roman population. Now, this religious part of Rome made the people so docile they wouldn't even fight back. So it was easy for these Germanic tribes to, you know. To exploit them because the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and the Hurulites, they're all Germanic tribes. So let's continue though. We're going to read a little bit more. The Vandal Glaseric remained in Italy only a short time. The Suviant Resimer appointed and dismissed emperors of the empire in the west for 16 years. Another general, Orestes, possibly a Roman and not a barbarian, nominated his teenage son, Romanless Augustus, emperor in 475. In the following year, Odessa, leader of a motley collection of mercenaries, mainly Hural Lions, deposed Romulus Augustus, nicknamed Augustulus, after having defeated and killed Orestes. The year 476 is generally accepted as marking the end of the Roman state in Italy. So Odessa was the leader of the Hural Lions. But let's continue because we got to get to the point. Odessa governed Italy normally as representative of the Roman Empire in the East. In reality, he acted as an independent ruler and inefficiently. In 488, the Ostrogoths authorized since about 450 by the government in Constantinople to settle on the right bank of the Middle Danube, were led into Italy by their leader, King Theodoric II. Besieged in Ravenna, Odessa surrendered and was assassinated in 493. The Hurulians were never heard of again. Now that's one horn that was plucked up by the roots. Now let's find the other one. That's Hurulians. Now we're going to find um, the Ostrogoths. In 535, the Roman Emperor in the east, the Abel Justinian, bent on re-establishing the unity of the empire, sent an expeditionary force to Italy. In his eyes, as in the eyes of all native Italians, 
Italy was still very much an integral part of the Roman state. Surprised initially by the attack, the Goths soon rallied behind their leaders. While most Italians looked on, a ferocious war was fought for nearly two decades between the armies of the Gothic kings and those of the legitimate ruler. The emperor finally defeated, the Ostrogoths disappeared from the pages of history. Now that's two, plucked up by the roots. Now to get the third one, we gotta go to Warscope Encyclopedia, volume 11. To get the third one, we're going to read about the Vandals. Vandals, a collective term used by early writers to refer to some of the ancient Teutonic tribes. According to the Byzantine Greek historian Pacupus, they originally occupied the region near the Sea of Avov. Now, we're going to skip down to the main part because we got to get to the point. We still have stuff to cover. Hilderic, the son of Huneric, and Eudocia, widow of Valentinian III, was a timid, unpopular king, a Catholic who restored the Catholic churches in Africa and was finally dethroned and murdered. This persecution of a Catholic provided an excellent excuse for the Greek Emperor Justinian to send an army against the Vandals. The Byzantine general, Balisarus, conquered the Vandals in 533 and the Vandal king Glamour was paraded through the streets of Constantinople in 534. After 536, the Vandals no longer figure as a nation in history. Mm. Hey, but the Bible is a fairy tale book. You don't need to believe it. The Bible is fairy tales made up to deceive men. But anyway, let me not get carried off, and I'm gonna try my hardest not to rant to these system brothers. These three kings, the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and the Hurlites, they got plucked up by the roots. We just read about them in the history book, just like the Bible called them. They was plucked up because they didn't go along with the papacy. Okay, they were Germanic tribes. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 17. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Now let's dissect this beast with the one head and ten horns. This is the beast. It has ten horns on the head of it. Then you see the little horn with the eyes in the mouth. This is the Pope. This is the religious side of the Roman Empire. The first three horns of this beast was plucked up by the roots. That is the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and the Hurlites. We've covered that. Now... If you subtract three from ten, you get seven. So seven horns remain. This is why the book says, And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Now, let me give you the list of the names of the kings that came after the three horns were plucked up by the roots. They are Justania, Charlemagne, Otto the Great, Charles V, Napoleon Bonaparte, and Benito Mussolini. These are six of the seven kings that came after the three got plucked up. Now, let's read this again. It said, there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. This one that is, system brothers, that is Benito Mussolini, because he is the sixth that came after the three got plucked up and from Justini to Mussolini, he is the sixth one that came and he is the is that was because Benito Mussolini is not alive right now. He is dead. He is long gone. So that is, is a was for us, for you and me. This horn, that horn, that seven horn to Zimbabwe's, this is the horn that we're waiting on. This is the guy that you need to look out for. And he is the one, just like the rest, he's going to join with this little horn. And with that, you have a political power and a religious power. The joining of church and state. That's why the Bible talks about the beast and the false prophet. And they are going to run the EU, sisters and brothers. Do you understand? Okay. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and go it into perdition. This is talking about the religious horn because remember, after the three horns were plucked up by the roots, there were seven remaining on the head of this beast. Now, we also have the religious horn, which is the little horn. 
Now, if you count seven plus one, you get eight. So he's the eighth of this beast. And when you go to the other beast, you see seven heads. We see the Babylonian head, which is one, the Medo-Persian head, which is two, the full Greek head, which makes six, and the Roman head, which makes seven. So the book says, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth of this beast and is of the seventh of this beast and goeth into destruction. Sisters and brothers, all these guys wanted to bring back Rome to the days when Rome was great and ruled the whole world and dominated. You know, stuff like the Inquisition and stuff like that. That's when Rome was running this thing, sisters and brothers. And let me tell you something, it's coming back. Don't worry, it's coming back. It's going to be worse than that. But anyway, after the three was plucked up, Justinian and to the sixth one, from Justinian to Mussolini, all of them had the same desire. We're not going to read about all of them because it's going to make the video way too long than it should be. We're only going to read about the first, Justinian, and the sixth, Mussolini. And we're going to prove to you what their desire was. And it's in the last two million years. Right? We're going to read about it. Let's go to, uh, uh yo, I'm telling you, sister and brothers, we, we, we read a lot of history books over here and it's not easy but i'm telling you we have to do this because it comes a time in life sisters and brothers that we need to stop believing and start knowing things this thing is coming down on us sisters and brothers we gotta stop playing man anyway let's go justinian one of the greatest of the Byzantine emperors came to the throne in 527. He was Justinian I, whose 38 year reign was distinguished by three major achievements. Let's find out what it is. He devoted his long reign to trying to recreate the old Roman Empire as it was when it dominated the Mediterranean throughout the centuries before the barbarian invasions. He succeeded in driving the Vandals from Africa and the Ostrogoths from Italy. So we got one history book co-signing another history book. So you know we ain't lying, right? We just read about the Vandals and the Ostrogoths that they got plucked up, right? And we actually was reading about Justinian earlier. But I'm just showing you, sisters and brothers, his desire was to bring back Rome to the days when it was great because this uh, and this is why he rolled with that little horn but anyway let's read about oh yeah my bad <laughs> let's read about Mussolini which is the sixth Benito Mussolini launched his anti-communist movement the fascist party which took his name from an ancient Roman emblem of the fascist a tightly bound bundle of rods with an axe in the middle symbolizing authority and unity the duce had grandiose ambitions of reviving the glories of ancient Rome and making the Italians once again a conquering militaristic people. The same desire that Justinia had, the same desire that Charlemagne had, the same desire that Napoleon had, the same desire that Charles V had. All of them wanted to bring back Rome, Susan Buzz, to the days that it was great. I'm not done yet, I still got a little piece to read. Mussolini's ruthless conquest of territory in Africa was part of his attempt to bring back the glory of Imperial Rome. How much more clearer can we get, sisters and brothers? But anyway, let's read a little bit more about this beast. Let's go. Revelations 13. And let's get into the real juicy part of this lesson. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Sisters and brothers, this is Satan rising up, but he's rising up in the form of the Gentile nation that he's controlling, this resurrected European Union. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. That's the Greek Empire. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. That's the Medo-Persian Empire. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. That's the Babylonian Empire. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. That's why you had to watch from part one to now because I'm showing you this EU that's coming up. It's coming up in the spirit of all the bees that came up before it. It's still one family. But let's continue reading. This guy that's coming, he's working for Satan, sisters and brothers. 
Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. That deadly wound that this beast received was when the, Ro the last Roman emperor, I think uh, it's Romanus Augustus, when he fell, a beast got wounded. And Justania, all the way to Mussolini, all of them, as we just read, they was trying to bring back Rome to its powerful state, right? In other words, they was trying to heal the Roman head, the head that was wounded, but they couldn't do it. But this guy, Look at this image again, sisters and brothers. And I make sure that I put it in purple so you could see. In case I forgot to mention, this is the abomination of desolation. The religious head that's going to stand in the holy place that Jesus spoke about. That horn that we are waiting on, he is going to revive and heal that Roman womb that was wounded, sisters and brothers. He's going to do what the six before him couldn't do. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So if you worship the beast, you, you can worship the dragon which gives power unto the beast, right? Because the beast is going to do whatever the dragon say. This is this resurrected EU system, brothers. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. Sism brothers, that's 3 and a half years. That's during the time of the Great Tribulation, Sism brothers. So if everybody who said that the Great Tribulation is 7 years... You in for a rude awakening, but let's continue though. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And this is the same way how his ministers operate as well. They come to you as a lamb, nice and calm, but a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is mothers. It said that he got two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. So didn't another scripture say that in the name of peace, he will destroy many? If you look at the world right now, sisters and brothers, you see all this war going on, you see all this division. People don't even know how many uh, genders there are. Sisters and brothers, you think all this organized confusion is for nothing? You know what? Before we even move on, let me make sure that we are, we're on the same page. Roman Empire came up, knocked off the Greek Empire. Then the little horn came up, which represents the religious part, and joined with the Roman Empire. And now we have the Holy Roman Empire. And three of the four emperors didn't go along with that garbage, so they got plucked up by the roots. And the and the six after them, from from Justinian to Mussolini, all of them was trying to bring back Rome to the days that Rome was great was they agreed with the Pope okay every ruler that had to rule had to go along with what the Pope says okay now let's continue let's read in Revelation 17 about this great whore and there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me saying unto me come hither I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters Sisters and brothers, this great whore represents the Roman Empire. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. What is the wine of this woman's fornication, sisters and brothers? Do you think you can make a guess what it is? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's Christmas, Easter, going to heaven. Eat anything you want, just pray over it. Sisters and brothers, this is the false doctrine that came out of that whore and the whole world is drunk with it there's another scripture i think it's in isaiah when he says stay yourself and wonder cry ye out and cry they are drunken but not with wine they stagger but not with strong drink sisters and brothers they are drunk with the false doctrine of the world even family members right now you're trying to tell them the truth but they wouldn't listen because they're drunk sisters and brothers they are intoxicated with this false doctrine so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and i saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns go on the internet system buzz and look at these uh european symbols you're always going to see a woman 
riding upon a beast's numbers. Go and look at it. The foxes inside of your face and people not paying no attention to it. These people are showing you who they represent. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Sisters and brothers, take a good look at this image that's next to me. You see it, right? You see this cup in her hand? All of those things that I mentioned earlier, Christmas, Sunday, Easter, going to heaven, all these false doctrine that, that, that is not defended by the Bible, even Trinity, all of that came out of this cup. And the whole world is drunk with it, sisters and brothers. And no matter what you tell them, it doesn't matter how much history book you read to them. It doesn't matter how much you're cross, cross referencing, they are deep in this intoxication, sisters and brothers. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this is not you. Pray, I beg you. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. Why Babylon the Great, sisters and brothers? Oh, I tell you why. How, look, look at this image. You remember this image? Now, that statue, this is the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had in part one, right? Jesus, which represents the stone, had to come and smote the image on the feet, right? But Jesus, is Jesus here? Jesus is not here, right? So right now, it's safe to say that this image is still in full effect, right? This image is still in one piece, sisters and brothers. So this EU is operating in the spirit of that image. It's a part of that image. We are in that ten toes part. We are in that last part. That's what I tell people. They say, how oh, you know that you got it right? Sisters and brothers, all the arrows is lined up. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. There are a lot of preachers today that know some of this truth that we're talking about over here but they will never teach it to the church you know why it is not profitable people of today is not going to pay you to tell them that god is going to throw them in the lake of fire they're not going to pay you for that nobody's going to pay me to tell them that hey if you don't keep god's commandments you have a big problem coming but anyway i want you to pay attention to what we're about to read here sister buzz verse 9 pay attention to this and here is the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth so sister buzz we're gonna go and find whichever country or whichever nation is built on seven mountains seven hills or whatever and we're going to read, we're going to read on find this house and buzz. Because I don't want you to have no question on who we dealing with. So, Pictorial History of Italian People, page 28. I don't want you to have no doubt in your mind on who it is the Bible keep warning you about over and over and over again. Servius Tullius in the 6th century BC was the Roman Salon and he introduced a classification of citizens for military and electoral purposes, very similar to that attributed to Salon in Athens in 594. According to legend, he built the walls encircling Rome's seven hills. Oh my gosh. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> so it's Rome we talking about, right? Did I tell you this? Did, did I make this up? Am I accusing Rome? Oh, oh, okay. Let's go to Gloria Universal Encyclopedia Volume 4. I need you guys to hear this. Much of the history of the Christian church is interwoven with the history of Europe. Mm. Ain't that so? Most of the history of the Christian church, most of the history of the things that you and I, well, not me, but well, most of the history of the things that you call holy today, that Christianity is affiliated with today, is tied up and interwoven with the history of Europe. Is that a, uh, is, uh, is that a coincidence? Anyway, let's continue. Elaboration of this subject can be found in such articles as Christianity, Roman Catholic Church, Papacy, Reformation, and Protestantism. Sisters and brothers, this thing is in music, it's in movies, it's in uh it's in the culture all the 
holidays that we have. You know, it's funny that the Lord gave us holy days, but man gave us holidays. No, let me fix it right. God gave us holy days and Satan gave us holidays. And you know which one the world chose, right? And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Listen, brothers, when John wrote this, these kings did not receive the kingdom as yet. They, they didn't even exist as yet in that time. But now in our days, they have received the kingdom because we're living in those times. And you could see it in the EU. I don't know how much they have right now, but when the Lord comes, it's going to have 10 because there has to be 10 kings. And let me show you, you know what? Let me say this one. Uh, let me say this real quick. You know, Jesus is the king of kings, right? And the Lord of lords, right? I'm going to show you something. This east that's coming, he's going to be running the EU and he's going to have 10 kings under him. So he could actually call himself king of kings, right? I forgot to mention this. When it says 10 kings, it doesn't have to literally mean 10 kings in today's terminology. It could be 10 presidents or 10 prime ministers or five presidents and five prime ministers that equals out to 10. It doesn't matter. All the, the kings represents is that these guys is people with authority. These guys can call shots. These guys can make things happen. They have rulership over whichever district they control. So kings could be interchangeable with presidents or prime ministers. That's what I'm saying. So the guy that's coming, he's gonna rule over 10 presidents, 10 prime ministers, we don't know. But these guys gonna be ruling and they together gonna work together, all right? And they're gonna fight against God and they're gonna lose. Anyway, back to the video, sorry. But anyway, you know, I, it's just something that I just realized, it's crazy. But anyway, let's go to verse 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. All of these guys, all of these 10 guys is gonna give their power and their strength unto the beast. And it said they all have one mind because they gotta be the same religion. They all believe the same thing. Now. Some of them might have their disagreements, but overall, they're all going to get along. And I'm going to show you what they have to sign to make sure that they get along. Let's go to uh, Gloria, another history book. Gloria Universal Encyclopedia, Volume 4. European Common Market. That's what it was called in the beginning, before they changed it. The European Common Market grew out of the powerful movement in Western Europe after World War II to bring together the often warring nations into some system of peaceful cooperation. The purpose was not only to avoid war and to bind West Germany permanently into the Western family, but also to reassert Europe's strength and influence in the world, just like it was in the beginning, because that's all, in almost everything Rome do, they always got a sneaky way that they're trying to rule everything. They've been trying to heal that Roman head. But anyway, let's continue. The first fruits of the movement was the European cold and steel community, begun in 1952. After the projected European defense community failed in 1954, the movement revived with the signing in 1957 of the Treaty of Rome. Treaties of what? The Treaties of Rome, Sizembas. On the 25th of March 1957, representatives of the same six countries met in Rome to sign the treaty establishing the European Economic Community, the legal cornerstone of the future European Union. This is what them 10 is going to have to sign, the treaties of Rome. Remember that citizen brothers. But anyway, uh, let's continue reading. I, I think you got some more. Establishing the common market, members of the common market, France, West Germany, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg are the same as those of the cold and steel community. Uh, so about that time when this uh, came in, it was only like about six. But I think they had reached the 10 at some point in time, but I don't have the fly. There was a fly that I was supposed to get, but I guess they took it down. My elder got to read it, but I can't I can't find it anywhere on the internet. So I guess they took it down, but I promise you I would have read it in brothers i can't end off this video without showing you this article 
I was on the site of the WEU. If you go on there now, you're not going to find this article. It, it, it used to be up there, but now it's gone. I don't know who took it down. They probably saw us reading it. But here's what I'm, uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to play a clip of one of my elders reading it, and I'm just going to add the writings on it and stuff like that because you have to get this. It's, you know, it's real funny that they took it down after we, we started reading it. But uh, here it is. Decision of the Council of the Western European Union on the residual rights and obligations of the WEU. Uh-huh. Considering that Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, the, ne the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom agree that they shall, under international law, be jointly liable for fulfilling the residual administrative obligations of the WEU and that to this extent they will assume jointly the rights and obligations of the WEU. Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom here and after called the 10. Recognize the call the what? The 10. Call the 10. You have to call the 10. Go ahead and read. Recognize that they will be jointly responsible, including financially, to the extent of the key governing mandatory contributions to the WEU vis-a-vis -vis the European Union Satellite Center with respect to the WEU residual administrative obligations specified in paragraph one of this decision. Now, you see, it grew from six to 10. England haven't totally gotten out yet. They're getting out, but somebody's going to replace them. You know why? Because the Lord said must be 10. They didn't try to go beyond the 10. All I want to say, sisters and brothers, is that 10 nations, the beast, is going to be ruling over 10 nations. They all got to sign the treaties of Rome. Let, uh, let's move down. Let's go to Revelation 17. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Let me tell you something, Sister Buzz. I'm, uh, I'm going to do a video in the future called The First Resurrection, where I'm going to explain more on this. When Jesus is coming and he's going to make his descent, he's going to raise the people from the dead. That's the first resurrection, Sister Buzz. No, nobody's in heaven. The Lord's gonna come down and he's gonna meet the people in the air to live and change. Those are a selected group of people that's gonna reign with Christ 1,000 years on the earth, not go back up to heaven. I'm sorry, you gotta expound on that. But then again, drunk with the wine of the great horse fornication. I mean, it makes sense. But anyway, uh, these are the people in the first resurrections and the rest of the angels that was left back after Satan got kicked out with a third of them. So, it's a new crop of gods because man was created to become God. I already did a video on that right here. And the angels that didn't follow Satan coming down. That's God's army. But anyway, uh, check this out. Let's go to uh, Revelations 19. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he do judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his heads were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So this is the coming of the Lord, sisters and brothers. And it said that these people, you know, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. These are the people in the first resurrection. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on a horse and against his army. You see how it says, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. The ten <laughs> gathered together to make war against him that sat on a horse and against his armies. So the ten and their armies, all of them is going. Yo, you, you know, you know. Just give me a, a little ranting break. Just give me a ranting break, please. Let me say this, sisters and brothers. This lets me know that this guy is woefully misinformed, and these people are really drunk. They are so intoxicated, and the people that they rule over is so intoxicated, sisters and brothers. You mean to tell me? That you're going to be, you know, you're going to be doing your thing. And you're going to look up in the sky. And you're going to see the heaven roll back like a scroll. You're going to see God coming. 
Jesus coming on a horse with all the people in the first resurrection and a bunch of innumerable amount of angels coming towards the earth and your first initial response is to yo hey yo let me go on war against this man brethren you don't gotta take me and throw me in a hole I ain't going with you at that point you're supposed to snap out of it and be like you know what I think I've been deceived I am on the wrong team but nobody ain't saying that sisters and brothers these people are drunk I can't believe you're gonna see God coming and your initial reaction you're you you you're going to make an executive decision to fight against God hey man you deserve to get thrown into the lake of fire I'm sorry and the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrote miracles before him, with which he deceived them which had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And it served them right. You understand me? It serves them right. You see how it says here uh, that the beast and the false prophet are going to be cast into the lake of fire? I think I did a video, uh, you know, explaining that they are going to be the first one that God is going to throw into the lake of fire. Even Satan is not even in there as yet. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Sisters brothers, let me tell you something real quick. You see how these people out here disrespecting uh, Jesus? And all these artists doing all these stuff. This is Muslim. Tell you something. The world don't know Jesus. They don't know he's the one that flooded this whole earth. You know, people don't know how ruthless God could be. You wanna disrespect Christ? Christ, Christ, Christ. So when he come back, all the fowls gonna be filled with their flesh. There's another scripture where God said that he gonna call out all, all all of the carnivorous birds and beasts to come and eat the dead bodies. This is Muslim. When Jesus is done with these wicked men and women. The fear of the Lord is really going to be on this earth because after God finished killing you, he going to call the lions and the tigers and the vultures to eat your dead body. You ain't ready for that to some brothers. Listen, when you pick up this Bible and you start learning, the first reaction you're going to have is you're going to fear. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. Sisters and brothers, let me tell you something. We are in the days of these kings. We can look at the European Union right now. We can see Luxem uh, Luxembourg, France, all these guys, the great and small nations, the iron mixing with clay. Even though some of them might not get along with each other, they still got to sign the treaties of Rome. And they're going to rule. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. They're going to bring some real pain on this world, sisters and brothers. That's during the time of the Great Tribulation, unless if you're in the place of safety, which is the wilderness. And I'm going to do a video on that as well. Don't worry, I got you. By the grace of God, you know, I'm going to... You know, I'm taking my time and get these videos out. But let's read this real quick because we need to see how Rome fits in on this scale of beasts. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Both of these beasts represents the Holy Roman Empire. The one on the right, the mutated beast, is showing that this Holy Roman Empire is rising up in the spirit of all the beasts that came before it. They are all a part of the same family. Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Then the ten horns that on top of that beast is, is, is symbolism for the ten kings that the beast is going to rule over when he comes. This horn here on the left, this beast here on the left, sorry, represents the same Roman Empire 
but the ten horns is showing that it's going to fall and rise ten times. Babylon, Medo, Persia, and Greece, they rose and fell one time. But Rome is going to fall and rise ten times. Rome already fell and rise nine times. And I've showed you. So we have one more horn left. And that's the beast that's coming. And he's going to join with the Pope or the abomination of desolation. And the two of them is going to run the EU. And then Christ is going to come and take them down for the tenth time. The last time. Look, look at the image. We already had Babylon, Medo, Persia, and Greece. Now, Rome fits in because he is the last one. He is the one that we're in right now, Sism Bus. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I got one more verse that I want to read. I really want to read this. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. This is Daniel seeing what John also saw in Revelations. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. God killed their armies, but he didn't kill all the people. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory in a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Remember, sisters and brothers, that stone that came in? smote the image on the feet and it said that that stone filled the whole earth this is jesus coming sisters and brothers this is gonna be a beautiful scene i daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me i came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things daniel is scared sisters and brothers he want to know what's going on but Daniel don't understand. This is not for your time, Daniel. This is for our time. This is for Voice of the Verses time. This is for your time. You are the one that's going to have to deal with this, sisters and brothers. And I really hope you're ready. I really hope that you're studying and you're applying yourself and you're keeping God's commandments. Because this is on you. I just had to say that. But Daniel want to figure, uh, Daniel want to understand what is it he's seen. And the angel come and he's going to explain it to him now. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. Now, it says four kings here, but we know that it's four kingdoms. Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Who are the saints of the Most High? The saints of the Most High are the people in the first resurrection season, brothers. Not the rapture, because they ain't got none. The people in the first resurrection are the saints of the Most High that's going to possess the kingdom. And again, I'm going to do a video on the first resurrection, but let's continue. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was the verse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. This fourth beast really caught Daniel's attention. He said, hey man, I want to know about this fourth beast. He's terrible. He, he not only destroy you physically, but he destroy you spiritually with the false religion. I want to know about him. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be the verse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall thread it down and break it in pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he did. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be the verse from the first and he shall subdue three kings. Now you see here Sister Buzz where it said ten horns of this kingdom are ten ten kings that shall arise and another shall arise after them and shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. Look at this image again, Sister Buzz. That little horn came up and then he subdued three of the kings, which is the Vandals, the Ostrogoths, and the Hurlites. Right? We keep him with the continuity. I love the consistency of the word of God. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, one year, and times, two years, and the dividing of time. 
three and a half years, sisters and brothers. That's during the time of the great tribulation. You see how it says here, he shall speak great words against the Most High. Yes, he is. And he's not even, the, the physical beast is not even here yet. The guy is not even here yet. And people already follow him. He telling the Most High, hey man, you not coming to this earth. I'm going to send the dead up to you in heaven. Yeah, we could eat anything we want. No, 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 no. You came and you done away with the law that says thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Yeah, so now we could do it. We can be lawless Christians now. Sisters and brothers, this guy is speaking great words against the Most High and he's not even here yet. By the mouth of this whore's children that came out of her. I almost missed something. I have to point this out. It says, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That's exactly what he's going to do. If you get caught telling this truth, you never notice when we tell this truth, we get the most rejection. We don't get along with nobody. It says here, and think to change times and laws. He's already done it. God said the seventh day is the Sabbath. He said, nah, the first day is the Sabbath. He already did it and he's not even here yet. And their looks is brothers. They are drunk with it and you already obey him. And you're going to look at me in my face and tell me I ain't going to take the mark of the beast. Brethren, <laughs> come on, wake up, man. Let's go, bro. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. The Lord is not going to allow this foolishness to go on forever, system bus. He's going to put an end to it. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him.